We welcome those of you tonight that have been, are with us. We're very appreciative of your, of your fellowship and interest in the truth. And we also recognize our brethren on live stream that are a growing number of people that we're able to fellowship with over the internet media. We are continuing tonight in the book of Jude. There's a certain sternness in Jude that is difficult for some people to receive, and perhaps they'd prefer that we not deal with it, but this is driven by one of the Lord's half-brothers who had a desire to speak about the common salvation, but the people whom he addressed were in a backward posture. And Jude saw this as very serious. I don't believe that uh, most Christians really know what very much about a backward posture or what it's like not to be up to speed or I don't think there's a lot of understanding about this because quite frankly there's too many Christian babies in the church so, something's wrong this is not this is not what Jesus does Jesus isn't in the process of having a family of babies yeah, they all start out that way but they're not intended to stay that way and there's there's too many uh, Christians that are not conversant with the things of God and uh, you can't be no one can be bitter about this or overly critical, but there must be a concern about it because Jesus didn't die for this sort of thing. But believe me when I tell you this. Jesus didn't lay aside the prerogatives of deity, enter into the earth's zone, mm -hmm. totally incapable of anything when he entered in, and go through all the things that are associated with growing up and then enter into an aggressive ministry of three years that outdid what some people do in lifetimes and then endure the sufferings of opposition and criticism and hatred and all this and then finally lay down his life. He didn't do all of that to get what we've got in this world today. Let me tell you, quite frankly, he didn't. That's right. And before the world ends, the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. God's yeah. promise is going to happen, and it's going to happen. Yeah. And when it does, there will be an instant obsolescence of a staggering amount of what's called Christianity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, now, Jude is concerned about what he's seen. There have been false teachers that have infiltrated, had infiltrated these people to whom he wrote, and they didn't, they didn't even know it. They crept in unawares, he said. Now, false teachers, and false teachers are teachers God didn't send. And it's not people that, like, make mistakes. We've, I've continually tried to emphasize this, lest we become overly critical of people that just don't know, and so they say things they don't understand, like Apollos was in this category, but he was anything, <laughs> he was anything but insincere. Yeah, yeah. When he made an error in judgment because he hadn't heard, he was an expert in Scripture, mm -hmm. and he knew the ways of the Lord. That's what the Scripture says. So this was not your, like your average street man at all. Amen. But false teachers are, pe are teachers who concoct teachings that not only are not of God, they're in conflict with what are there of God, and they're the, the deceivers, not the deceived, the deceivers. And they have a defining effect on those around them. See, they're not just giving their opinions of Scripture. You've got to understand this about, th this is a certain category of people. It, that that are the big they are the big have the beginning they begin things. Mm -hmm. They're not just giving their opinions of scripture. They're they're trafficking in lies. And it's serious business. 
they're totally without profit to the saints of God. You can't get a good thing out of a bad source. And you can't get a bad thing out of a good source. This is the way the kingdom works. In other words, a tree, you know it by its fruit. <clears throat> For the saints of God, they these type of teachers, most of them in our day are historical because we don't we don't have many original thinkers in our age of any of any sort sort. Most of them are borrowed. Their understanding is borrowed from somebody else. But these uh, these pioneers in erroneous theology, they rob the people of God. Whenever you're subjected to something that's not totally true, and there are no half truths. Let's be clear about this: there aren't half truths. It's either all truth or all lie. One or the other. And whenever you're subjected to something that's not true, it'll rob you. Now, most of us have experienced this. We, we come to see this <laughs> after a while. Listen, uh, brethren, it's not easy to get over bad teaching. I've been doing this for, for many years, <laughs> 65 years, and I've had to get over some things. They, they weren't just blatant. They were skewed off in the wrong direction, had the wrong emphasis. It's hard to get over them. <clears throat> now, when people like that permit, that propagate debilitating doctrines that, that distort the understanding and misrepresent the way things really are, when those kind of people come in unawares, you got a major problem on your hands. Yeah. Because regeneration sensitizes the heart. If, if that isn't known, it sensitizes the heart. Now, a person has to grow. I understand that. Sometimes a person senses something's, something's off center. They can't tell you why, but they've got this. This is a new creatureship. This is, when a person is born again, there's lies are, are like sandpaper to a, to their soul, and as they grow, they they find out about this. Now this is worsened when a person when people are not earnestly contending for the faith. See, Jude told me you ought to earnestly. I was going to write about the common salvation, the things we all know, the things we all delight in, the common hope, and all this, but I I, I couldn't do it. I had to wake you up to earnestly contend for the faith. You can't be a part-time Christian. You can't be. Amen. You cannot be. It's impossible. You're either all out for Christ or not. Yeah. Earnestly contend. you got to press. Mm -hmm. The reason you earnestly contend is you're in a world that's declining. You're yeah. surrounded by spiritual death. You've got an adversary that's smarter than you are when it comes just to shrewdness and he's hounding you trying to find a weak spot and trying to devour whoever he has permission to devour and you've got trends and you've got people and you've got customs and you've got all kind of things that are against what you're trying to do what you're trying to do is get through life and get safely to the grave or be ready for Jesus comes, or, or be ready to make the transition from earth to glory. Mm -hmm. And so when you encounter someone that impedes progress in that area, you've got a serious situation on your hand. This is not something you can be kind about and polite about and pretend like it's not there. Yeah. It's difficult enough yeah. without somebody Sit cluttering our vision with distraction or bringing clouds of ignorance over us is bad enough under pretty ideal circumstances. If a person doesn't contend for the faith, it opens the door for imposters to come in. Now, Judah will leave no doubt about how God feels about this. He'll tell you that these, this class of people are already condemned. They're in an irretrievable state. Yes, and he makes that plain. They're already reserved for condemnation. Now, this, this isn't everybody that's wrong. I want to say this again because yes. people tend to distort what we're saying here. 
We're not saying that this is everybody that's wrong. There's a certain class of people that are wrong. And these people are like Hymenius and Philetus and Hermogenes and Phila, uh, Phil, uh, another one, they, they can't be changed. That's, right. Amen. Uh -huh. that's, who, that's who Jude is talking about, those, those class of people. He confirms the seriousness of the dilemma mm -hmm. that those he is writing to were in. And it all centered in the assembly. You got to make this clear in this here. See, listen. In our day, the assembly of the saints has been dramatically minimized. Yeah, amen. Yeah. There just isn't a lot of this. It's either singly or small groups, or they got all kind of substitutes for the general assembly, when as the scripture says, you're all together at one place at one time. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what we're talking about, and that's where this thing, Jude's talking about, that's where this thing was perpetrated. Mm -hmm. See, when people, when the saints of God assemble in one place at one time, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about, assembly. Not in five places, at six times. Right. Same place, same time. Saints yeah. come together. There is to be edification, exhortation, yeah. admonition, comfort, teaching, and it's mutual. It's not a one-man system. Amen. It's not Amen. like that. Yeah. It's a mutual thing. Christ has distributed himself mm -hmm. to his body. Mm -hmm. No one gets all the, all the goods. Amen. I mean, it's designed this way. It's too big. Well, one person got all the goods. That's Jesus. Yeah. Everybody else just has part of the goods. And if they're not together, they miss what the other person's got. That's right. So it's mutual. All right, having said that, we're in verses 12 and 13 tonight. <coughs> A description of these false teachers. And it's, uh, it's pretty strong. Yeah. So I hope you'll buckle up your seat. <laughs> this is the way it is now. We're talking about the way things really are. These, <clears throat> these false teachers that crept in unawares, that snuck in, yeah. these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of the winds, trees whose fruit withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their shame, wandering stars, to whom is to reserve the blackness of darkness forever. What? Amen. <laughs> yeah, I admit that's pretty that's potent. But Jude had to say this because these people he wrote to, they hadn't picked up, but they didn't know that's what these men were. They just looked like friendly people that were among them, you know. These are, these are spots. Again, the translators come through for us, proving that you can't really decipher the truth but from the original language. Some versions say they're hidden reefs. Others blemishes, other hidden rocks. Another version calls them dangerous, filthy spots, dangerous reefs, a disgrace, dangerous, ugly spots, stains, blots, hidden reefs. <laughs> But it all narrows down to dangerous. Spots that emphasize just like deterioration and rottenness and decay. Little leaven leavens the whole lump and pretty soon everything is swallowed up. Hidden rocks, that means that they're damaging. They're like rocks under the surface of the water that tear up the ship when it goes through. That's what they are. In your feast, that's what they are. Huh? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. When you come together, that's what these people are. You got them at your feast. They're at your feast of charity. They're at your feast of charity. Yeah. And they're contaminated, infectious spots. Yeah. They got a disease of soul that'll spread. Mm -hmm. They say things that'll kill you and send you to hell if you don't get out of them. They're at your feast. Spots and blemishes. 
Well, see, these people hadn't seen this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'd say, now you can't hide, can't hide iniquity. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Not from God, you can't. Right, yeah. And not from discerning people, you can't. But you can from undiscerning people. They can come in, welcome. We're, we're just want everybody to come, whoever. Well, I'll be right up front with you. We don't want everybody to come. There's some people we recommend stay at home. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the person's got a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, we don't care how bad they may have been. That's yeah. the, beside the point. Uh -huh. But they are, they're welcome souls because we all were in that category, you know, one time. Feast of charity, your love feasts. What were, what were those? Well, it's generally understood that there are some of the early churches, nothing says all of them did, some traditionalists do. They say, oh, some of them had a meal before the Lord's table. It was a custom of what, God never said to do this. Right. Understand this. God never said to do this. And it may be highly revered by men, but it's just by men. Yeah. This was not given by God. Amen. They're trying to duplicate the Last Supper. They ate a meal. But the Lord's Supper was introduced after the Lord's Supper was not part of the Passover. Yeah, right. yeah. mm -hmm. And people that put on the Passover as though that emulated the Lord's Supper, they're out of order. Mm -hmm. It was after supper that he introduced the Lord's Supper. It was a different, it was not a celebration of deliverance, it was a celebration of the deliverer. Yeah, amen, man. See, the Passover was to remember a deliverance. Ask not what we're doing here. Yeah. We're remembering the deliverer. That's right. Amen. It's altogether different. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were at the love feast. Now this apparently was practiced at Corinth too. It was brought up at Corinth. They had the same thing. And it was a problem there too. We only have this feast mentioned in Jude and Corinth and it was problematic in yeah. both places. Uh -huh. In fact, it was so bad at Corinth, he said, eat at home. Yeah. You got houses to eat in, don't eat when you come together, because they were practicing division and all inconsideration and all sorts of things. Be, don't, he said, when you're coming together, and they were taking the Lord's Supper, but Paul said they weren't taking the Lord's Supper. He said, when you come together, it's not even the Lord's table you're eating. Yeah. See, this is not, this table is just not a formality that's imposed upon the church. Yeah that you stick in the back of the building someplace mm -hmm. and do whenever it's convenient for you. That's not what this is. Amen. Amen. This is the Lord's table. And Paul said, you can't eat from the Lord's table and the devil's table. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Yeah. And then with there's fussing and fighting and this sort of thing, that's the devil's table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he told them they, they should... Uh, Eat at home. You have houses to eat in. Eat at home. Don't come together and and have this meal. I'm I'm not saying it would be wrong to do this. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying I question the wisdom of connecting it with the Lord's table. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, early some early uh, Christians, John Wesley, for instance, he didn't do it with the Lord's table, but he instituted several meals a week where the brethren ate together with gladness and singles of heart. He saw the need of doing something like that. So we're not saying that that's wrong. What we're saying is you've got difficulty enough concentrating at the Lord's table on right things without throwing in something on the side yes, amen. that opens the door for men like this to be there. Amen. I've noticed uh, over the years, particularly in country churches, there's the hardest church in the world to preach at. It's a country church. Now, I, I know what I'm talking about. I preach at it. It's a country church, the hardest to preach at. They're the most indifferent people in the world. You've never seen anything. Unless you've experienced this, you don't know what I'm talking about. But everyone, they know, they know what I'm talking about when I say this. And there's, we would have church suppers, you know, potluck suppers. And there'd be people turn up invariably that I never saw. And I'd say, you a member here? Oh, yeah, I've been a member here for X number of years. Well, I've been here for two years. I've never seen your face. And I'd say, quite frankly, 
your presence offends me. I'm offended that you come for supper, mm -hmm. for a supper, and think you can get by with it. But you separate from the rest of the people all other times. So I'm not going to fight with you about it, but I just want you to know you don't please me. And I just tell them right out, just tell them. They don't like it. That's, that's too bad. I didn't like it either. So these, they, they were not ashamed. They were not hesitant to come to these feasts. See, these people, he's going to describe them. And whoa, it's, it's frightening what he says about them. They were not afraid to come to these yeah. feasts. They fed themselves without fear. See, they were false teachers, but they were not intimidated by the brethren to whom Jude wrote. They're not intimidated by them at all. See, now there are some people, I pray with them, they're not serious enough by God to make unbelievers uncomfortable. But you're serious about God, you make unbelievers uncomfortable. Amen. Some of them pick up on it and want to get out of that category of unbeliever because of your influence. See, so there's that. Don't don't let up on your influence. Don't modify it. Don't tone, don't tone your influence down because that's going to be the thing that's going to attract the people, that's right. the genuine people, that will attract them. Now, Paul paints a scenario of a, that was an unusual circumstance, an unbeliever or a stranger come into the assembly, which was, a, that was an unusual occurrence. Now, today, this is like a, they press for this to happen. This is an objective, but it wasn't an objective. And you can't find this in the scripture about the assembly of the saints. But there were some that did come in. They'd be like inquirers or Gentiles, something like this. He said, a, a stranger. An unbeliever or a stranger comes into the assembly. Uh -huh. And he has not been there before, evidently. And all, all the people are prophesying. Yeah. All prophesy. Uh -huh. And here's what he said. If all prophesy, it's speaking of the edification, exhortation, uh -huh. and comfort. Right. If all prophesy, and an, there come in one that is believeth not, or one unlearned, he's convinced of all. Yeah. Uh -huh. He is judged of all. Yeah. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report mm. that God is in you of a truth. Yeah. Now here's what happened. Uh -huh. The assembly was a harmonious unit. Right. They're all in contact with God. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything about this person, uh -huh. but God does know about yes. this person. And so he puts in the mouth uh -huh. of the various people things about this person that they didn't know they were talking about this person. Uh -huh. But God addresses that uh -huh. person through the assembly, yeah. all speaking yeah. yes. and prophesying. Uh -huh. And he, fought, he fell down, yeah. worshiped God and said, God is here. Because he, he knew that only God could... Amen. Unveil like things like that yes. in his presence. Mm. So when the people do not quench the spirit, mm. well, that's a big if, yeah. though, and someone comes in, God will deal with that person mm -hmm. in the assembly yeah. through the brethren, by the, by the whole assembly. Yes. That's why when some stranger comes in, mm -hmm. Don't clam up. Amen. Don't yeah. clam up. Uh -huh. Draw near to God and ask God to give you something to say. It may be a word of comfort. Maybe this is a real yeah. believer that's yeah. just very discouraged. And so the God will move the people to speak something that will raise that, Amen. lift that Amen. person Amen. up. Right. See? Yeah. Given, this is why a one-man show, it, it, it quenches all this. It, yeah. Yes. So you see how I say that because some people would say that to reach people you have, you have a supper. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. But here, in the, if you reach people, all prophesy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's how it works. And, in, <clears throat> and these men 
that he's writing about had crept in unawares, and that's not, they weren't speaking to edification, and they weren't convicted either mm -hmm. by what happened in the assembly. See? They were unbelievers and strangers. Yeah. They came into the assembly, but this was not an assembly that could convict those men. They come in and they just, well, we're glad to have you here. Everyone is welcome. Something here for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. One of the things I noticed when I was attempting to pastor churches professionally was we would we would come into congregations, of course, that had already been going long before we got there, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed is that every, every congregation that, that we were in, not, not just as leaders, but this included... Just as like the regular members too. Yeah. Every church had a different culture. Yeah. That's right. Now a group of now every individual, all of us have individual qualities, personalities, mm -hmm. gifts, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But but churches have personalities That's right. mm -hmm. and qualities mm -hmm. and characteristics. And one thing I noticed is that a church see a church is really the sum total. Of all of the different, mm. different members and mm -hmm. parts, it can't be anything else. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. a, a church does not exist in the abstract. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. Well so, said. So mm -hmm. every like th this this assembly, Word of Truth Fellowship, this is a certain group of people. There's a certain spirit or culture here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go to another assembly. There's a different spirit and culture there. Yeah. Now some some of these cultures are bad. They're just bad. Mm -hmm. And we noticed this with, when we would come into a church. I, I began to notice the way that people would talk, the who was in charge, who was doing stuff, what the, the, the kind of the attitude of the people was. And it is extremely difficult to change mm -hmm. the culture of a fellowship yeah. mm -hmm. if it needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Once you get off out in left field somewhere... It's very, it's like trying to turn a battleship. It just, it's very hard to turn. Yes. It seems like maybe that's what had happened here to yes. these people. You're right. At some point, they're, they're, like you said, this is about the fellowship. He's not pointing out individuals here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's, he's saying this happened in your fellowship. Mm -hmm. At some point, their fellowship got off, the, the, the spiritual culture got off somewhere. Yeah. And so this is something we have to be aware of. Amen. And all of us contribute to the culture. Yes. So that so it is true that one bad apple can spoil the barrel. I've seen this happen in churches. One you got a group of leaders or something, you get one guy that's a little bit off, it can ruin a whole group of leaders. Mm -hmm. You get immoral people. It, it, I've seen this happen. Oh, amen. I have too. Yes. The, the protection of the assembly, and Satan tries to penetrate assemblies as well as individuals. The protection of the assembly is not left to one person. It, I will say this, maybe at the inception, maybe a Paul or someone like this will, but eventually the, the protection of the assembly is through the assembly Amen. itself, by everyone giving what they've been given. Yes, that's right. By everyone ministering according to the grace that's been given him. But that provides a sort of a protective environment. If everyone's just sitting there spectating, there's no protection. Uh -huh. right. not, not the kind we're talking about. Right. You can have all kinds of people sitting there with different agendas and different right. objectives and different purposes. Uh -huh. And maybe it's an exploiter that sees simple people and he'd like to exploit their resources. Yeah. See, there's all kinds of things that happen. But if each member is holding to the head, right. as Colossians 2 says, and the head ministers through him, and, and as each person ministers, yeah. that forms a sort of right. protection for the people. Good system. I was thinking about it in view of the body. Mm -hmm. Being the body of Christ, when you have a healthy body, all the members are doing what they're designed to yes. do mm -hmm. to keep the body strong. And so mm -hmm. it's the same with Christ's body. With mm -hmm. each of the members adding and compacting Compact. the members together, yes, right. Amen. then that's Amen. the strength and the fortification comes. That's right. Amen.
And that, that's yeah. why sometimes, you know, sometimes somebody will say something and it'll sound kind of harsh. It's like, where'd that come from? But see, we got to be very careful to, to allow that kind of expression because if, it's, if you don't know what's, what another person may be even thinking, but the Holy Spirit does. So, I mean, as long as it's in line with the truth and it's an exhortation, perhaps, something that may seem kind of stern, but there's a reason for it. There's a reason that the, yeah. the body ministers certain things. So you don't want to say, oh, you should only say good things or nice things or things that we like. That's not the truth. No. Mm -hmm. Now, you've all heard sheep bad mouth, I'm sure. This is they're stupid, you know, and all this sort of thing, but they're not. Here's how sheep protect one another. They, they travel in flocks. Uh -huh. And what I understand, I decided one time, I'm gonna read up about sheep because I, I just sense, I think the sheep are getting a bad rap by a lot of people. And when they have a, a infirm sheep, he worked, that's, that sheep has worked into the middle of the flock and the flock, they always travel as a flock. If one's out of the flock, that's unusual. That's a lost sheep. It's a one out of 99, you might say. That's, that's the unusual situation. So that's the way the church is. When they're flocked, mm -hmm. there's kind of a protection Amen. that takes place there. But these people that you'd write into, they, they didn't take advantage of this. And they let a non-flock person get in the flock. Yeah. Yeah. A wolf. Yeah in sheep's clothing. So now Jude's going to tell them what they are. Were you going to say something, brother? Yeah, I'll go ahead and say this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are preachers mm. who think that way about their people, and they'll mm. say it to other preachers, mm. that they're stupid. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that they don't know what's oh, going yes. on. Uh -huh. And they're just pretty fortunate to have me yeah. mm, to keep them straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You and I have both heard things like that. Oh, We've well, been yeah. in uh -huh. groups where talk like that was said. Mm -hmm. It's good to remind them. Well, in you, this area. You are the leader. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just right. considering whenever we feel weak, that is a very important time to be with the brethren. Mm. Yeah, Just what you mean. said about the sheep yes. made me think about this, that the infirm sheep is surrounded yeah. by those who are strong. Mm -hmm. So when there are times that we're struggling... It is, it is of utmost importance that we do everything we can to make it to these Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I found it that uh, when I could have cited a lot of reasons not to be with the saints, uh -huh. when I was with them, much of my difficulties were corrected just by be, just by be, being there and hearing the various expressions, yes. and pretty soon I was up on my yeah. feet again, yeah. see. Uh, The uh, experience that a, uh, a lot of people have in what we call church, you're, you're with a lot of warm bodies, but there's not a connectedness between the people. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. You might have people even who, uh, who have some working knowledge of Scripture mm -hmm. and, and have mm -hmm. a personal faith, but they don't see themselves as connected to, to, to Christ mm. as a body, which means there's a connection between Amen. other mm -hmm. believers in them, a Amen. real connection. Mm -hmm. And so it's possible to go to an assembly even where there is some truth being ministered and sit there alone and walk away alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's much harder that way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now Jude launches into a diagnosis of mm. these teachers, and it's yeah. a very, very stern. Mm. Clouds they are without water, yeah. carried about of winds, trees mm. whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Well, that's, now that's, yeah. That is strong mm. language. In other words, they're totally Profitless. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. hmm. He says this by divine inspiration amen. and by examining yeah. their fruits. See, mm -hmm. if you want to know if a person, a leader of whatever kind of he is, mm -hmm. is faithful, look at the ones he's leading. Uh -huh. If they paid attention to him mm -hmm. and have accepted what he said, 
what kind of people are they? Yeah. That will tell you what the person is, and that's what Jude is doing. Mm -hmm. So he says they're clouds mm -hmm. without water. Yeah. Now that is like a contradiction of terms because a cloud, yeah. technically speaking, is a mass of particles of mm -hmm. condensed vapor yeah. suspended in atmosphere. Mm -hmm. See, so it's a cloud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a cloud is a condensation of, of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So clouds without water, that is like a, <laughs> a contradiction of terms. Yeah. Clouds without water are not technically possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now some versions say it's without rain. Now it, now it is possible for clouds to not uh -huh. rain. Now yeah. That is possible too. Uh -huh. But just as clouds without water technically are not possible, so it's impossible that false teachers can deliver true prophet. Yeah, amen. Yeah. They may help people solve some problems, but mm -hmm. the, their problems weren't the real issue if they did. Mm -hmm. They have an appearance of being genuine, but mm totally false. Peter, covering the same situation, mm -hmm. says they were wells without water. Yeah. That's how he put it, wells uh -huh. without water. So they're just a hole in the ground, that's all they were. Yeah. Amen. Real prophets mm. speak unto men, mm -hmm. and they know it, mm -hmm. to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Mm. They're productive. This is a real prophet. He mm -hmm. that prophesies speaks unto men mm -hmm. to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14, mm -hmm. 3. These men left arid deserts mm -hmm. behind them. Yeah. Wherever they were, mm -hmm. there was spiritual decline, spiritual ignorance, spiritual mm -hmm. lapses. Mm -hmm. That was in their wake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, to be sure, this doesn't mean that if the person who speaks the truth, there are ne there's never anyone that has lapses. No, they, but it's the people that didn't take up what he said. Yeah. Uh -huh. If he's speaking the truth, hmm. there are those who supposedly minister. Those to whom they supposedly minister, these false teachers remain ungrounded. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. They're infantile in their thinking. Mm -hmm. And they're vulnerable to the defiling effects of every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone that begins in Christ is in that you know, category of children mm -hmm. easily tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. Everyone begins that way, mm -hmm. but that you, yeah. they're not. Salvation is not calculated to leave them that way. Yeah. Salvation is calculated to grow them up, mm -hmm. so they're discerning yeah. and understanding, and come to know the love of God. Mm -hmm. And the love of Christ that passes all understanding. Yes. See, they—that's what salvation to calculate to do. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's not what's being accomplished, hmm. then it's not a salvation preacher. Yeah, Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Now, I may—I may hesitate to say that, but, but that's just mm -hmm. the truth. Yeah. It, that presumes what person's preaching is accepted. Mm -hmm. The man's respected and is accepted. Mm -hmm. And if those people that believe it and accept it and live by what he says mm. do not become grounded mm. then whatever he taught, mm -hmm. it was not the salvation of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's not what salvation does. That's right. Amen. Salvation not only gets you out, it gets you in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Takes you mm -hmm. out of darkness and puts you into yeah. light. Amen. So they are... Uh, Clouds without water. They're mm. carried about of winds. Mm. Carried along by winds. Blown along with the wind. They are, these are trendy and fetish mm. yeah. preachers mm -hmm. and teachers. They cave into every kind oh, of change, yeah. theological change, mm -hmm. change of theological emphasis, mm. different way of doing things in the church. They, they fall for all that. They're carried away by winds. Changing mm. theological winds. Mm -hmm. New carnal ideas. These are not godly men. Mm -hmm. See, they're emulators of other men. Yeah. If men decide to change the way they speak, mm. cut down on the vocabulary, mm. allow for profanity in the lab in the in the uh, vocabulary. Mm. See, the people write a new dictionary. Yeah. They write a new dictionary. Mm. You take today's dictionary, man, there's words in there. You know, what would have thought they, these words would be in a dictionary. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're in there. Yeah. 
because he loves change, but change. Well, some people did. They changed the language of the Bible. Yeah. To match the language of declining language of the people. Now, how wise is that? Stupid. That's not yeah. wise. Uh -huh. Right. You got to yeah. elevate the language of the people, and sometimes Amen. there are some cultures the yeah. Bible is the only thing they got that elevates human language. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everybody does know what thee and thou means. Mm -hmm. So people can't say it's old fashioned. At least when it said ye and you, yeah, ye and thee, you know, plural or singular, <laughs> you don't you don't know what these others yeah. say you. You don't know if it's ten thousand people or one. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. no idea. So like. When language changes, mm. the Bible nomenclature should not be changed mm. to match that. Mm -hmm. What well, changes should ever be as if there was some, something fundamentally wrong mm -hmm. with the translation. Carried about by winds. There's a new way to get people in, mm -hmm. they buy into it. Mm -hmm. New kind of emphasis yeah. to swell the, swell the congregation, they buy into it. Some kind of new, new, new doctrine, like a health and wealth doctrine, they grab it right away. Pick it up right away. Don't you, or do maybe you don't remember when there wasn't a health and wealth gospel? Mm. I can remember when there wasn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the people, even the people who among whom this happens now, mm -hmm. they were against that kind of thing. They were yeah. for holiness. They were mm -hmm. against. See, but this changed. Mm -hmm. There's been a change, and those who are carried about with the winds, they <laughs> pick up those things. They're not moved by the spirit. They're governed by change. Mm -hmm. Do they think that change is better? Mm -hmm. It can be better, but not mm -hmm. necessarily so. Yeah, really good. Yes. I'll go out on a limb and say this. Um, you know, when it comes to the assembly, which is the context of what he's talking about here, yeah. I, I I think on the on, it's on the part of wisdom that that um, the brethren try to stick with with a a, a translation, Wait, whatever that may be, that. because. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult for, for you to be able to follow what they're saying if it's scripture or not. Yeah. I mean, and this is just, anyway, I just said it. <laughs> well, I, I agree with it, yes. Yeah, they asked me, particularly we're talking about children. You know. Peter says of these, now here Jude says they're carried about of winds. Peter says they're carried with a tempest. Like a wind, so it's not like a gentle breeze. Right. It's a tempest. The NIV translated mists driven by a storm. Mm -hmm. That is, their teaching causes disruption yeah, and division mm -hmm. and offenses mm -hmm. and things that are not valid. Thinking that's not valid. See, it's like a like a spiritual storm. Yeah, right. Disruptive. They cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, is what Paul says in Romans 16, 17. He says, avoid those. So stay, stay away from them. Stay, stay away from them. Jesus said of the uh, Pharisees, he said, uh, let them alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them alone. Why? Because they're not trafficking in, in truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Truth is, you see, truth is never upgraded. Amen. It, it's never sh reshaped. Mm -hmm. There's never a new emphasis. Mm -hmm. See? Now, when they with the modern charismatic movement, which is called the renewal, uh -huh. which accounts for 555 million of the. 1.5 billion non-Catholics. <laughs> a third, a third of non-Catholic Christians belong to this movement. Ah. So this had a, tremendous, had a tremendous effect in Christendom. It has been very disruptive, faddish. I make it a point every day to listen to some of the preaching that's over the media. Because I've sensed that there's trends. Pretty soon you hear some strange teaching. Pretty soon everybody's in the public media, everybody's saying it. And it's trendy. And, and trends last about a year. About every year, 
I plotted this out, but every year there's some new kind of, and quite often you'll hear them say, this is what the Lord is doing today. So the renewal movement, there was a time when they said the Lord is teaching people to make animal sounds. Huh? Well, we've heard this personally. People bark like a dog, roar like a lion. That's what the Lord is doing, teaching us. And then someone else says, there came a time we were slain in the spirit. You just fall down. That's what the Lord is doing. See, the Lord has already done the new thing. There's a sort of a holy standardization that has taken place in spiritual life so that you can pick up a writing of a man a thousand years ago if it was true and it'll just it'd just be like it was today. Yes. When I was at school uh, in the undergraduate at uh, Missouri Southern, I, I said, told myself, there has to be other people that can hold the truth. And that's when the Lord introduced me to Charles Spurgeon. Yes. And I had never met the man, but as I was reading him, I was agreeing with him all the time. It's like, we say the exact same thing Amen. over at the fellowship. And so that's what got me interested in. Just over a hundred years ago. Yeah, so you're right. Over a hundred so years ago. That, and the Lord is with you. Um, your witness and testimony of him never dies. Amen. It's as fresh as it was the day you wrote it. Amen. hundred years later. The scripture says their works do follow them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I used when I started building my library, and that was, I have a small library now. But I was not building my library. I made a decision not to read it or buy a book that wasn't at least a hundred years old. And they and the books written then were like apostolic next yeah. compared to today. <laughs> compared to today. But see that teaches you wherever truth is said, it doesn't die. Sometimes uh -huh. you will recall when you get older, you'll recall something you heard. Years ago, you heard someone say, and you didn't pick up on it then. But you'll think about it, and it'll, it'll enliven your soul. Yes. See, because truth never loses its power. Amen. I've done some thinking on this trendiness, too. And uh, I, I think there's, there's a couple of reasons why. You're right. This has taken over the church. Yeah. And I think the reason why, one is, is because a lot of churches are not built on truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're built on something else. And so the, 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 you have to kind of change things up just to keep it kind of going. That's right. You know? Yes. The other, and the other, the other reason trends are, everything's so trendy now, is too, is because if you, if you, don't, if you don't have any core convictions, mm hmm that's right. Well, then mm -hmm. they're blown here and there by That's every right. doctor. Mm -hmm. See, we, I got one thing where this one place has changed is very significant is in music. Mm -hmm. yeah. For hundreds of years, the church had a distinct uh -huh. kind of music. Right. It doesn't anymore. In fact, if, if you don't tell the words, you can't tell if this is someone from the world singing or. And some songs, they're so vague, like you light up my fire. You don't know if they're talking about God or Jesus or their husband or their boyfriend or their neighbor. Oh, you'd be surprised how many songs there are like this, Christian songs. They're not definitive enough. But anyway, the church has changed its music so people of the world feel more at home. And it's kind of a... It's either raucous or it's kind of groany moany type music. Well, feel at home is in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Carried by the winds. Mm -hmm. Then he mentions whose fruit withereth. Some of the verses read, and this is a literal translation. Autumn trees without fruit, without fruit at the late autumn gathering time. The idea is they didn't get ripe soon enough. 
They didn't get the fruit didn't get ripe before the cool blast of autumn came. Uh -huh. See, so that, that's what that's what withered the uh -huh. the fruit. So these are people, these prophets, false teachers, are people. What they teach can't take a person far enough. It ca it can't mature the person. And if they don't get matured, they're going to wither. Yeah. God has made no pro no provision for perpetual juvenility. Mm -hmm. If you think He has, you're just wrong. Got to change your mind on it. You got to change your mind on it because that's not true. Uh -huh. We're to grow up in our in our understanding of God. The eternal life is the knowledge of God. Amen. That's what eternal life is, uh -huh. that they might know Thee, the only true God, they might have eternal life which is knowing God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. So how, if that's what eternal life is, how could it stagnate? How could, how could it truncate and stop at a certain level? Yet if you stop growing, you, you stop knowing. Yeah, amen. Yeah. And Satan doesn't tone down his temptations just because, just because you're not wise. He doesn't say, well, let's, we'll use a little lesser. He'll roll over you. That's right. He'll take advantage of a person that doesn't have understanding. Yeah. Now, if they're a new babe in Christ, God will protect him. He'll make him stand. He'll make him stand. Yeah. He'll keep him from falling. Yeah. But there comes a time for the reason of time. Yes. Reason, by reason of time, you ought to be teachers. Now, what he said, yeah. Hebrews 5.12, whose fruit withereth, yeah. fruit not brought to maturity. So it is with these false teachers. What they give you, it's like it's like a form of baby food, and it's kind of dumbed down baby food. But that's like all you get. You know, you may be in there, you may be under this person's ministry for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and he's talking about the same thing at year 50 that he was talking about in year one. He's not leading you on. Now you read Paul's writings. Read his writings to a stable church and how they differ from his writings to an unstable church. Take Corinth and Galatia. It's surprising what he didn't tell them. What he told the Ephesians, what he said in Romans, what Philippians. See, Philippians was a very stable church. He's the only church, they're the only church Paul told them why he was what he was. I counted all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord and so forth. Felt by is the only church he told that to. And they're the only church he told what was involved in Jesus humbling himself in the second chapter and divested himself of the prerogative of deed and becoming a servant. He's the only church he told that to. Why? They were more mature. Yes, amen. So the less, the less mature you are, the less you can receive. And this is the ideal circumstance for these false teachers. Yeah, yeah. They specialize yes. in these kind of people. Mm -hmm. If you really grew up into Christ, you'd like repel these kind of people. They kind of, mm -hmm. they kind of stay, <laughs> stay off from you. Mm -hmm. Whose fruit yeah. withereth. Trees that are twice dead. Some versions say doubly dead. They're twice dead in, the, in this sense. This is not the only sense. They, they have no sap within uh -huh. and no fruit without. So it's dead inside, dead outside, uh -huh. same way. But I think more is involved than here. I think they were, they were once dead in trespasses and sins, uh -huh. but then there come a time when they died spiritually. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, why do you say that? Because we know from Scripture that false, some of the worst false prophets like the woman named Jezebel at Thyatira. He gave her space to repent. Yes, amen. So even false teachers, mm -hmm. she taught his, she taught Jesus' servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed to idols. Whew, that's pretty bad. Yeah. He gave her space to repent. Now there's no false teacher mm -hmm. that kept on in the false teaching that wasn't given by God. Amen. Yes. Space to repent right. because God's not looking for a reason to condemn people. Yes. If there is, we'd all be condemned. Yes. So they're twice dead, see? They apostatized. Yeah. In other words, they're totally profitless. 
Then he has plucked up by the roots. They lose all kingdom utility. Plucked up by the roots. Jesus told his disciples, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Yeah. Now God knows who he did and who he didn't plant. We don't know, but we know when they're rooted up, God didn't plant that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good to know, isn't it? Yes. Amen. These false teachers have been removed from kingdom utility, up, uprooted. Every religious activity in which they engaged was without the Lord, without power, and without spiritual advantage. It made no difference what it was. They were uprooted. They were not recognized in heaven. And Jews writing that they shouldn't be recognized on earth. And when you've got a religious system that recognizes people that aren't recognized in heaven, you've got some real problems. I had more than, well, quite a number of lengthy conversations with the president of a school, Bible college, mm -hmm. said you need to sift out who comes here mm -hmm. and you need to know what your teachers are teaching. Mm -hmm. You got to have hands on. Mm -hmm. Some people should not, and I say this because some parents sent their children to Bible college as as a reform school. They, they send them to Bible college to straighten them up. Well, there may be a place for that, but it shouldn't be in the college, but you can have some separate yeah, place. Right. But you don't want those kind of people mingling with the students. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it was a short conversation. Yeah. Every plant my Heavenly Father has not planned will be rooted up. God will not allow the perpetual existence of people who handicap his people. You will not allow it. The reason these people never, these men never edified, but only defiled is traceable to these conditions. They really didn't have anything to give. Mm -hmm. They were clouds without water, yeah. uh -huh. whose fruit withered. So they didn't have anything really to give. Yeah. Amen. So God plucked them up eventually by the roots. I said, how can we know who these people are? Well. Let's put it this way. You need to know. That's, that's what the church has to work out. Mm -hmm. That's part of working out your salvation with fear and trembling. You can't let somebody else define by name who these people are. Amen. That's not how it's done. Mm -hmm. Unless they're really bad like Hymenaeus and Philetus and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. Then he adds, they were like reckless and wandering. Raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. See, you can see the strength. Of, yeah. <laughs> these are uh, how to win, how to win, win and influence people, how to influence people. They wouldn't tell you that this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But he paints a picture of ultimate religious instability. Mm -hmm. So this is a picture of spiritual instability. False teachers are a contradiction to spiritual life, which targets stability. If a believer doesn't become stable, they've missed the whole point. They've missed the whole point. The point is to grow up into Christ in all things. There'd be no more children tossed to it. See, that's the whole point is to become stable. Admittedly, it takes time, but not as much time as people think. Not as much time as people think. Right out of the chute, look what Stephen did. Look what Philip did. Look what Paul did. It doesn't take that long to grow up. Now, you don't peak out, understand? You, you could be mature and be 21, or you could be mature and be 91. I mean, but there's a growth process all the way to the, all the, way to the end. These are raging waves of the sea. Some verses read wild waves or violent waves, savage waves. These are like the waves that dashed that ship in pieces that yeah, Paul was yeah. on. It was that, that kind of way. It wasn't the gentle rolling waves that ships ride on. It was, those aren't the kind of waves they were. They were destructive waves, ruining churches like Corinth, Galatia, Thyatira, and others. See, they were struck by these wild waves. Yeah and it, it caused severe damage. Peter wrote of this same same thing. Peter, Peter, second chapter, verse 17, so forth, is a, a replica, rep, 
replicates this text here we're dealing with. He says, For when they speak like great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same of the same as he brought into bondage. That's a, that's a breakdown of dis, wild, destructive waves, see. And they foam out their shame, casting up their own shame as foam. Isaiah, you might see, it said the wicked, the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest whose waters cast up mire and dirt. So what happens to these raging waves, they, there's a churning effect, so they, it reaches down to the floor of the water and brings up all the filth and throws it out on the shore in a surrounding a foam that finally dissipates. Foam, this, just, it looks big, but it's, it, it dissipates. So what has happened, what these men were teaching actually brought out of people the moral and spiritual filth. That's it, right. yeah. mm -hmm. Why do we read about preachers that commit fornication? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting pretty... Yeah. Uh, why do people that in the name of Christ want to be rich? What? Uh -huh. It's what they're taught yeah. has brought that out of them. Amen. That's why. Person who is, uh, whatever a person is, he's the result of, of the what he's accepted, the teaching he's accepted. Yeah, amen. It may be the teaching of the world, mm -hmm. may be the teaching of an apostate, it may be the teaching of a man of God, mm -hmm. but whatever a person is, is a result of whatever yeah. body of thought mm -hmm. he's embraced. Mm -hmm. It makes him what he is. Mm -hmm. And there is a body of thinking mm -hmm. under the guise of being in Christ mm -hmm. that brings filth to the top yeah. uh -huh. and causes people to sit at a love feast and lust, yeah. uh -huh. which is what these men yeah. did, and Peter talks about it. They, they lusted after the women at these feasts, yeah. uh -huh. forming out their own shame. Uh -huh. Wandering stars. Other versions say shooting stars or wayward stars, stars going astray. See, stars travel in a predictable path. Men on the ocean can navigate by the stars. A wandering star is like a shooting star, a falling star, a comet. You can't, <laughs> you don't hear of a ship match, wouldn't say, follow that comet, you know. At least two times I've seen a shooting star, a falling star. Yeah. This goes over there just... But it's no path, see? Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's got out of the orbit. Yeah. It's orbit. Uh -huh. So wandering stars, these are people that got out of the kingdom orbit. Yeah. Yeah. See? They got outside. If you walk with Christ, there's, a certain, uh, there's an orbit uh -huh. for the soul that you're... Yeah. You kind of lock into it. And if you don't quench the spirit, you don't grieve the spirit, you live by faith, you get you get in this orbit. And it eventually leads it leads to the presence of the Lord, see? But if you get out of that orbit, well, that's what they did. They were wandering stars. They erred from the path. And they're reserved for the blackness of darkness. That's some phrase, isn't it? The blackness of darkness. Now they're wandering stars, but they got but they're headed for blackness of darkness. Now stars were given for light. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were lesser lights, mm -hmm. but they were given for light. Mm -hmm. Scriptures tell us this. Mm -hmm. That stars of heaven are for light, mm -hmm. Jeremiah 31, 35. For for these wandering stars or shooting stars or falling stars or aimless comets. They're headed for darkness, blackness of darkness, yeah. black darkness. Peter calls it the mist 
of darkness. Second Peter 2 17. This is imposed darkness. Amen. It's like what happened to Elemis the sorcerer that was trying to withstand the word of God. And Paul imposed darkness. So he went about, he said, You'll be dark, you'll be blind for a season. I've often wondered if Elemis ever did repent, you know. But he went about seeking someone to guide him. It was imposed darkness. This is outer darkness that the damned will occupy. Cast them into outer darkness. That's the blackness of darkness. It's like the darkness imposed on Egypt when the darkness could be felt. Where it could be felt and nobody went out. It, it, was, it must have been that. That was a dreadful plague. When Jesus died, there was an imposed darkness too. Darkness covered the face of the earth. As an old colored spiritual, it says the sun refused to shine. Yes. Amen. Amen. It grew Amen. dark. It was yeah. Imposed darkness. Think of it, a lake of fire. It has outer darkness. The fallen angels are in chains of darkness. They're, they're locked into ignorance and they can't get out of it. Now, it is possible for a man to be reduced to that state. That, yeah. you, you, but the gospel keeps the personality, transfers you out of darkness mm -hmm. into the kingdom of God's dear son, see? Amen. So only God can rescue you from darkness, and only Amen. God can impose uh, blackness of darkness. It is not, not even a ray of light, none and none at all. And he says that that's what's reserved for these teachers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're reserved for that. So they, they've been written off. They're all, these men, whoever they are, mm -hmm. and it's not, a, it's not up to us to define who yeah, they are. That's right. It's up to us to maintain ourselves so they don't have an inroad. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the, because these Satan, his angels and the people follow him are sensitive to light. Mm -hmm. They can't stand light. Mm -hmm. So the more light there is, like they said to Jesus, leave, yeah. leave us alone. Mm -hmm. yes. You come to torment us before the time? There's going to come a time Jesus is going to say, I'm here to torment you now. That's right. hmm? Yeah, well, that time's coming. Mm -hmm. See, they're, they have an aversion to light. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the more you shine, that, that doesn't mean Satan's going to run away from you, but he's not going to have like an open door all the time to you. You remember Jesus said, to the Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Well, how's that? That's a, that yeah. Jesus said that. Yeah. Well, the question was, a, it, it couldn't be answered. It's like, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Well, there isn't any, there isn't any answer to that. That's the same here. These were people, Jesus knew who these people were. We don't know, but he did. How could you, how could you, how could you possibly escape the damnation of hell mm -hmm. to these people he is talking to? Yeah. That's blackness of darkness. Yeah. Well, you can see the strength of what Enoch said. It wasn't that he was mean or inconsiderate. It's that the, the circumstance was very, very dangerous, mm -hmm. and the people had to sort of be stabbed awake, so to speak. Uh -huh. That's what he's doing. As soon as someone is tender, that's not the way people of God talk. Mm -hmm. To people that are sensitive, humble of heart, mourning because of their sin, that's not, that's not how they talk to them. When Saul of Tarsus said, what shall we do? He said, you, who do you think you are, Saul of Tarsus? He, he was already right. tenderized, so to speak. So if you be tender, God, God won't speak to you this way. When you have a broken and contrite spirit, you humble yourself in the sight of God, mm -hmm. the, he won't talk to you this way. Yes. If there's something that you need to be warned about, he'll be gentle. I said, here's this over here, you better, better be addressing that. This is a dangerous spot here, but he'll talk gently to you and comfort you. I think I'll close there. You can. 
the strength of what he's saying just sort of arrested my attention. I thought if that's anything that moves a person to fill to the spirit to talk like that, has got to be a very serious situation. This is, you don't want to get into the habit of loose talk, loosely condemning people, this sort of, you don't, don't want to get into that kind of habit. And you can, if you're living a decadent age, you can get so you're just negative all the time. You can get that way, and, but we need to help each other not to be that way. But when it, when it does call for sternness, yes. the thing that makes it effective is that it's not all the time yes. Yes. sternness, see? Mm -hmm. Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah, the, the, the wandering stars, the, it made me think on more of a positive side. A star led the wise men to Jesus. Yeah, that's and right. Jesus is called <laughs> What's the day wise? star, <laughs> yeah. which of course is the sun. And we're also called lights in the world. You are mm -hmm. the light of the world. And we'll shine as the stars. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the thought came to me that in order for us to do that, if we're going to be light, and, and that applies to all God's people, not just the leaders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although leaders should be lights, especially yeah. illuminating. But all God's people should be lights in the world, or are lights in the world. But in order to shine, in order to do that, the thought occurred to me that you you have to have something to say. You have to have a message. That's how we shine. Right. Now, now, Jesus did say, let your light so shine for men they see your good deeds. So you uh -huh. can do good deeds, and that is a way of letting yeah. in light as well. Uh -huh. But see, we're, we're interested in the light of the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we, we should make it our business to, to have a message. Yes. Amen. Let's have something to say, uh -huh. and, and let's make sure that it's what... It's what God's message yes. is. We're not free to like come up with our own mm -hmm. message, and yes. that's one of the reasons we study the scriptures uh -huh. is so that we know what is what is God's message, mm -hmm. and then that's the message that we're going to broadcast. Yes. Yes. And Amen. that's how and that's how we're lights Amen. in the world, leading uh -huh. people, leading people to Christ. Amen. Amen. Said something about the truth can never be upgraded, it remains the same. But that means that if someone takes the truth and downgrades it, then it's no longer truth. And teaching right. it makes it even more. Uh, That's right. That's right. Makes it even more wrong. Can't That's think right. Of what I want. Mm -hmm. But the truth, since it comes from Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, mm -hmm. it only makes sense that it shouldn't change as the, as Jesus mm -hmm. himself does it. See, the reason it's that way, I'm sure you know this, but the reason it's that way is because when it, when the truth of God addresses the failure of men, it's at the foundational level. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not at the symptomatic, symptomatic level, mm -hmm. marriage and this sort of thing. It's not up here. It's, out, it's all of sin and comes out of the glory of God. Yeah. That's the deal. And salvation deals with the objective of God. It's not dealing with the details yeah. It applies to details, understand, but the gospel message itself does not deal with the details of men. And so it addresses the basic nature of men, and it promises the things God has purposed to promise. So it's at a, it's at a different level. Amen. Yeah. If you're trying to adapt the message to the needs of people, you've watered it down. That's right. You've changed it. There is no gospel like for adulterers uh -huh. yeah. or for rich men. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's for all men. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. All right, we'll have a closing word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for Jude, who was raised in your presence. We thank you that he had... Uh, insight and courage to speak frankly about this subject and it, it appears as though there's not been a generation in the world that didn't need to hear this hear this message somebody needed to hear this so we're very grateful father for its inclusion in the scriptures we ask that you would help us to understand it and see it and to extend our efforts in sanctified ways where we are in a total agreement with yourself. In Jesus' name, amen.